This video is brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your incredible support. Zooming in Final Cut Pro absolutely sucks, and I think that Winston in the comments would agree. So today we're gonna take his request and create a Zoom plugin using Apple Motion for Final Cut Pro. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you do not get the project browser, go ahead and push Command, Option, and N. Then we're gonna select the Final Cut title. I would recommend setting your duration to five or 10 seconds, whichever you prefer, and push Open. From here, we're gonna go ahead and delete the type text here, and we are going to leave the title background. Go on up to this menu here at the top, click Add Object and Add a Camera. We're gonna go ahead and switch everything over to 3D. Then from there, we're gonna come down and create a rectangle. So I'm gonna select our rectangle tool, and I'm gonna click and make it any shape, it does not matter. Then we'll jump over to our inspector, go down to our geometry settings, go into the size settings, and change it over to 1920, by 1080. And that is if you're in a 4K timeline. If you're in a 1080 timeline, then you're gonna wanna set it to 960 by 480. We're gonna jump over to the style and we're gonna disable the outline. Let's go ahead and change the color to red so we can visually see it much easier. Then we'll go into the property settings, go to the transform settings and reset that parameter so that it is directly in the center. Now we're gonna go into our library, go down to our generators and find the color solid feature. Drag that in and we can rename this to be controls. Then we're gonna go ahead and disable that so that it is invisible. We're gonna go up to our filters, go down to tiling and find the Kaleido tile feature. Jump on over into your inspector and locate the width and height. We're gonna go ahead and set that as well to 1920 by 1080, matching the original dimensions of our rectangle. Now let's go ahead and also rename our rectangle to something like framing, just so we have an idea of what it's going to do. Now what we'll end up doing is telling our camera to frame up that rectangle, thus creating the really nice zoom. The Kaleida tile features we're gonna use to actually give us on-screen controls in Final Cut Pro. So to do that, select your Kaleida tile, go over to the left-hand side and select publish on-screen controls right here. As of right now, it's doing its own thing. So if we click on the corner, you'll see that it is rotating and shifting all over the place, but it's not linked up to our framing rectangle just yet. To do that, select your framing rectangle, go into the shape settings, go to the geometry settings and locate the width and height. Next to the width, click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior and select link. From there, we're gonna drag the controls over into this well here. Under the compatible parameters, select that, go down to the bottom, find filters, collide a tile, and select width. So now the width of the Kaleida tile is going to be linked to the width of our framing rectangle. Let's go ahead and rename this to be link width. Then we'll push command D to duplicate it and we can change the name to link height. Then we'll follow the same steps. We're gonna change the compatible parameters in filters, collide a tile to height. And then we're gonna also wanna change our target parameters in our object shape and size and height. So now the height and width of the collider tile should match up with our object. Now you'll notice that the collider tile is actually rotating on its own. You could definitely leave that in and you could link up the rotation if you wanted. However, I find that a little bit annoying as the camera goes in and it rotates and it's a little bit strange. So to fix that, select your collider tile, go over to the angle settings, click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and we're gonna use what's called the clamp. What the clamp does is it won't allow a given parameter to go beyond the parameters that you set. So if you look into the clamp settings, you can see it's set to minimum and maximum, and the minimum is zero, the maximum is 572 degrees. We're gonna change that so that it is zero. So now this collider tile can actually no longer rotate. It can only grow out and in. Now we have one last feature of the collider tile that we're gonna need to link up. Select your framing rectangle, go over to your properties, find the position settings, click on this arrow, and we're gonna link the X and Y values. So click that down arrow, add a link parameter, drag in the controls, and then we are going to, under compatible parameters, go down to filters, collider tile, center X, and then we're gonna wanna offset this by negative 0.5. And that is just due to how the positions work in Apple Motion. If I jump into the collider tile and look at the center settings, you can see that they are actually set at 0.5 and not actually straight up zero. So we need to offset it by 0.5 
and then it will be directly in the center. Now we're gonna go back to our link and we're gonna rename this to something like link X position. We'll push command D to duplicate it and we'll rename this to be link Y position. Then we'll do the same steps. Compatible parameters, filters, collider tile, center Y, and we wanna link that to the properties transform position Y then we're gonna offset that by negative 0.5. So now it should be directly in the center. So if we've done everything properly, now when we move the collider tile around, it's going to move our rectangle around. Now all we need to do is select our camera, go up to the behaviors, go to camera, and we're gonna select the framing behavior. Now we're just gonna drag our framing rectangle in. What the framing parameter does is it's going to take our camera, move it in 3D space to frame up whatever object is selected over the duration that we have set here. So if you look at our purple parameter behavior here, you can see over the entire length of our video, the framing is going to happen. And it's actually happening only at halfway because our position transition time is set to 50%. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and shorten this down to two seconds. So I'm gonna go to the two second mark and I'm going to push O to trim it down to just two seconds. Then I'm gonna push Shift M to create a new marker. Double click that marker. We're gonna change the type from standard over to build in optional. That will enable us in Final Cut Pro to actually remove or add in the intro animation that's within the animated zoom. Now what we wanna do is change some of the settings so that it is a bit smoother. So we're gonna come down to the transition and change it from constant over to ease both. That will enable our animation to be considerably smoother. Now sometimes the zoom can get a little jerky at the end. To fix that, change the orientation from orient to current to orient to final. And for whatever reason, that actually fixes the animations in some cases. So if you're having some trouble, make sure you try that option out. Okay, so we have the zoom in. Let's go ahead and get the zoom out. Selecting our framing, let's go ahead and call it framing in. Then we'll push Command D to duplicate it and we'll rename this to Framing Out. Now I'm gonna drag this to the end for the last two seconds of our title. Then we're gonna come here at the two second mark, push Shift M to create a marker, double click, change this type over to Build Out Optional so now we can enable the intro or the outro according to our taste. And now we have the framing out at the end. However, it is not zooming out just yet. So to fix that, rather than having it zoom in on the framing object, we actually want it to zoom out so that it fits the entire title background. So go ahead, drag the title background to the secondary framing out. And so now it will go from its original position zoomed in on that rectangle to zoom out to fit the entire frame. Finally, let's go ahead and disable the framing object and ensure that your publish on-screen controls is checked in the Collider tile so that we can change this in Final Cut Pro. After that, let's go ahead and publish a parameter that's going to enable us to change the speed within Final Cut Pro. So to do that, go ahead, select our framing in, find the position transition, we're gonna click on this down arrow and we're actually gonna add it to a new slider rig. We're gonna go back to the framing out and do the same thing, add to rig and add it to that slider rig. Let's change the name of that slider rig to be speed. Then we're gonna drag the slider all the way to a full 100 and drag both of these parameters to 100. Then we'll drag it to zero and set these both to zero. So now when it's at 100%, It'll play out over the whole two second duration and when it's down to zero, it will be instantaneous. So that just gives you a lot of flexibility over how fast you want it to be. Now let's say that we want to actually showcase in seconds how long it's going to take. I'm going to change the range maximum over from 100 down to two. So now it's showcasing that in one second the animation will play out or in two seconds. So that's just a little bit easier to understand. After that, go ahead and click on this down arrow and make sure you push publish so that this shows up in Final Cut Pro. Now to get this over into Final Cut Pro, go ahead and push Command S to save. Then we're gonna go ahead and just call this Zoom Tool and you can put it in whatever category you like. I'm gonna throw it in my Tutorials category and push Publish. So now if we jump into Final Cut Pro, go into our titles and locate the category that you saved it in, you should be able to locate your Zoom Tool. Drag that on top of your video and now if we play through, we should see the animation playing out. 
we've got a nice zoom in and we should have a nice zoom out. Now what's great is in Final Cut Pro, we now have the ability to change where it zooms into. So let's say we wanna to zoom to the top left corner. We can go ahead and play it out. We can also increase the speed to be two seconds so it's a much slower zoom, just like so. So that is how you can create your own zoom tool in Final Cut Pro. If you are a patron, you can actually download this tool right now. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and I can't wait to see you in the next one.